Hi folks and welcome to our second part of this uh, series on concept mapping basics. So uh, where we left off the last time was just uh, a concept map on making a cup of coffee and as you can recall we've started with a very simple concept map showing you the main concepts of ingredients and if you open that box you can see what's inside of the little box. It's also called a nested node just to refresh your memory. We've had utensils and we've had energy sources. Uh, remember we told you how to export using your file and export to an image or you could have the option of exporting to a web page as in this case over here. What we're going to do next is uh, look at how to customize your concept map and so for that you would need to show your styles palette and I've got mine open already let me just bring it in on the screen it looks like that styles palette and so for any reason if your style palette is gone has disappeared for some reason you can always just say click on show styles palette and it will reappear on your screen and so what we do with the styles palette is to customize and you know just a little bit enhance um, of your concept map so what we have at the bottom here if you note you'll have different ta tabs one for the font one for objects and that is the bubbles or the circles one for line and then one for C map the ones that we use mostly here would be uh, the fonts objects and then of course lines so you would have noted if you've played around with concept mapping before and especially in this particular tool you would note that depending on how you draw your lines they either end in an arrow or without an arrow how to remedy this if you want to add some arrows and like I often say it is not an exact science you gotta select or highlight your particular line that you want to change make sure that you've got the line tab activated and not any of the other tabs on the line you'll get the option to add arrows in different directions turn the direction around or have the arrows in both directions so if I click and toggle between one of these arrow heads over here you'll see an arrow head is added I'll do the same for this one so you can see again the arrow head is added and it's that simple now to affect the color for example to affect this text in the bubbles you will again have to highlight the area you want to affect go to font and here you can change it to bold let's make all these ones bold you can do them one at a time or you can select them select multiple ones by holding down your control key and press on bold and you'll see that all your concepts your huge or big overarching concepts are highlighted and emboldened okay furthermore you can also add a little bit of color to that just by looking at that color of the text by changing object colors go to object and let's look here we can add a shadow let's change the background to all of them there we go and let's do that holding down my control key and clicking on it I like using or rather working without a mouse so it takes a little bit of a finesse but with practice you can make perfect so that is coloring in your different bubbles similarly likewise you can change the color of your text I'm just going to do that main one so you can see what I'm talking about again I have to go over to font go to the text color and click on white and so any of the bubbles that you will make after that will automatically have that same color schemes it will make use of the same color schemes next I want to quickly show you how to add um, and embed certain content for instance here remember we've imported our training resources now just to show you what that looks like this is all my training resources and I can add different ones I can even embed a PowerPoint in this particular let's say I want to add one there it will ask me if that is the correct one and I'm happy with that I say okay and now you can see I created a drop down menu for this. I 
I can also add an external website by giving it a name. VS um, forward slash www.uwc.ac.za. Let's hope that one works, and there you can see creates a menu when I click on it. You didn't have the name of the particular website, and if I click on that, it should open up the website for you. And there you go. Okay, folks, so I think that is where we will leave it for today. Very short session on it, but I trust that it's been helpful. See you next time.